Okay, this is going to demonstrate the A2DP volume application as you can find on the Android market. Uh, here I've got it installed. This is the icon for it. Um, next to there, I don't know if it's easy to see on this video, but there's a stored volume widget as well. And you can see up in the status bar I've chosen to uh, enable the notify icon. Okay, These, uh, this application um, doesn't pair the devices itself, so you have to pair those in Android before using it. Let's open up the app right now. Um, up at the top it'll show, you can just adjust the media volume, the, the music volume with this. Um, that's just a convenience feature, not a, not a major feature of the application really. Um, the main thing that you'll do first off is you'll uh, click the Find Devices, <coughs> which I've already done. And it goes through and looks in your Android phone and finds all of your paired devices and lists them for you in this list view below. Um, now you can select any of these devices. Uh, at this point you can remove it from your database uh, or you can OK, which just takes it back with no changes. This is showing what the device is <coughs> in the current configurations. If I select Edit, I can now name the device and I can decide whether I want to capture the location when this device disconnects and whether I want to set the media volume when this device connects. And the slider bar at the bottom here um, is the volume that it will be set to, uh, where, where the media volume will be set when this particular device connects. Also I can name the device up here. I've chosen to name this my F250. Uh, so that gives you the basic features. I've got several devices paired, as you can see. <coughs> uh, some of them, for instance, uh, like this vehicle here, I'm using a, um, a FM modulator, and it doesn't like the full volume, so I set it to three-quarter volume or so uh, to prevent distortion. So that gives you an idea of, of how you can configure each device independently. In the um, Preferences screen, you'll see that there's a GPS listener timeout and this is how long the GPS listener will stay active and that means the satellite beaming up in your status notification there before it finally times out and gives up. Um, I've got mine set here to 20 seconds for instance. Um, <clears throat> and then the GPS inaccuracy, this is saying how, how accurate does the data have to be before I give up. So once it gets within a certain accuracy, it'll also turn off the, the GPS listener. I've got mine set to uh, 5 meters, approximately 15 feet. I've also got it configured on um, Android 2.2 and above and with certain car mode uh, programs, like the car mode that came in my Motorola Droid here. Um, on, when that car mode disconnects, so you take it out of your car dock, you can also have it capture the uh, the GPS location. I also have mine configured to start at boot, which is the default. So when the phone starts up, my service will start up in the background. Um, I've got it configured to show the pop-ups, so little pop-up messages will come up and say when it's connected and disconnected and what car I connected to. And I also have the notify in foreground that means that my notification bar will show an icon. Now right now it's it's turned off because when I'm in the preferences, changing the preferences, it actually shuts down the service. But you'll see when I exit, my service will start, I'll get a notification here, and my notification will show up on the notification bar. Having the notify icon up there actually keeps the program from being killed by other programs as well. Uh, if the program was to get killed, your volume may not adjust properly and you may not capture your GPS location. So having the notify icon uh, does help drastically improve that, prevent that from happening. I didn't turn it on by default because uh, a lot of people really don't uh, want to have those notifications up there. <coughs> um, I've already stored a car location, so after your first disconnect, it'll store the GPS location of your last disconnect. So um, I disconnected from a vehicle last night, and I can pull it up in any of these applications. Um, you can use it on, on a browser, or I usually use Google Maps, or the GPS status app is, is really good. I'll show Google Maps right now, and this will show where my last location is. It takes a second to load Google Maps, of course, and once Google Maps loads, it'll spawn this location URL, 
and it'll show where that car was parked, at what time and date, and the accuracy in which I caught it at. And of course you can use all the Google Maps features to zoom in and out. Um, any application that will accept the uh, GPS URL uh, can open. As you can see, I had four of them there. <coughs> um, my application is running. I know this because my notify icon is on, which is configured to be on. If you didn't configure it such, then you wouldn't see it there. But you would see this stop service button. So at any time, if I want to actually stop the service um, from running, and the service means that's the piece of software that actually detects the Bluetooth connect and disconnect and actually captures the GPS location. If I stop that, you'll see it'll tell me that I stopped it, and now it'll say start service. And if I start it, it starts back up again. Um, so this is the basic functionality. There's uh, some other things you can do in the manage data. Here you can export your database to the SD card. So if you want to capture all the information about these devices um, to your SD card, you can use that to do so. Um, you can also export your last location data. And when you do this, when you do any of these exports, it'll show you where the file was stored. It'll say whether it was successful or not. Um, I'll go back to the main screen. <coughs> uh, that's the basic functionality of the device. The help screen will take you to the website. Uh, delete all data will actually wipe out this whole database and so you can start over again. Um, the exit will shut down the service and it completely exit the program. So it'll, it'll pull it all out of memory and everything. Now it will start up again, of course, if you initiate it. It's not the same as uninstall, obviously. And uh, that's the basics. Uh, I've also got the uh, widget installed. So the widget, if you click that on the screen, then it'll pull up just like the stored location button does, does the same thing. Um, another thing, this notify icon just tells me when the service, you know, how long it's been running for. When a car connects, if I pull the same thing down, the icon will actually change to a car. Or I should say, when any Bluetooth device connects, it'll change to a car. And uh, it'll also tell me what car I'm connected to. So that's about it. I appreciate any feedback on the website. Here is the uh, website uh, shown here at the issues list. And if you have any issues with the program, please send me the issues because I really want to make this thing work right. Uh, it's been working great for me on my Droid. Um, but again, if you have any issues, troubles, just don't understand how it works, uh, by all means either submit an issue here or send me an email. Thanks a lot.